Hello and welcome back. So today I am going to do a like overall video on like my cochlear implant and just kind of like my journey with that and like how it works and what I'm doing and kind of like what the future holds in terms of that, which is very exciting. Um, so for starters, um, my hearing loss, I was actually born with normal, normal hearing. Um, then at 13 months, I contracted a rare form of bacterial meningitis and uh, uh, landed me in the hospital. And uh, I pretty much, based on accounts from family members, that I lost my hearing basically overnight. Like, I can't snap. If I can snap, that's a snap. Okay. Um, so it's like sudden, it's very sudden. And um, yeah, I went from. 100% normal to absolutely nothing at all. So the best way I can like describe it is like, um, you know, watching television and you press the mute button. And that's pretty much what it's like. Unless it's like really, really loud, then yeah, I'll feel the vibrations. But essentially, that's what my hearing loss is like. And um, that was in both ears. And um, I found out, well, my parents found out that I was a candidate for a cochlear implant. And at the time, they were still relatively new. They didn't start doing cochlear implants in children. I would say, like, under the age of two until 2000. But, because I had the meningitis, they were able to push that back to 18 months. And I believe they first started doing cochlear implants in children with FDA approval in 1992. So this was like eight years later. And this is actually like 15 years after the first cochlear implant was FDA approved in the United States, which was 1985. So it was still a really new technology back then. And I'm very fortunate that I was able to get it. And basically it takes my hearing loss from 100% loss. And so for example, in the audiologist booth, you have like these um, tasks so like you have like senses and words, kind of like repeat it back to the audiologist, and I got about ninety to ninety five percent on that, and then you add like background noise. So I'll think of like your school hallway, your gymnasium, uh, a conference hall, um, anything where there's like a lot of people talking at once. Um, my comprehension is like I don't know about thirty percent. It's not the best, but I wasn't using like the program designed for it. And even then it's not the best either, but uh, the technology is consistently improving. And um, my next upgrade, um, it should be better. And I'll explain that later on in the video. So basically at 18 months, I was implanted with a cochlear implant. It was um, August 23rd. So um, you had the surgery and then you have four weeks to heal. Then they activate it. So basically, you go to the audiologist and you, uh, and they will turn it on, activate it, and you do like a small programming. And then for like the first year or two, you go like every couple months. And once I started doing that, I was also enrolled in a preschool. It was basically the equivalent of preschool, like a program for deaf children and hard, deaf and hard of hearing children. And I did that from when I was two until I was five. It was like, basically right before I started kindergarten, I was in that program with other uh, deaf and hard of hearing children. And so I've been in school since I was two. And um, if I finish, my finish is four years. Most of those years I was in school. I'm like one year away from like being a doctor, a lawyer, more likely a lawyer, because, like, the doctor is extra. Like, you know what I mean? Like, 13, then another three is 16, then four years of college. I've been in school for, like, 20 years. <laughs> that, like, gonna blow my mind. But, yeah, that's a lot of time to be in school. Um, so that's kind of, like, sidetracked. So I tend to do that. So let's just go with the flow here. Um, so back to where I was at. So I'll get... Uh, these programming, so they're called mapping. So every time I go, they'll go through all the electrodes. I have 22 of them. 
and my cochlear implant and basically to go through like the high and the lows it's like a lot of beeps and boops and you gotta like say like is it loud is it comfortable and then after a while and just get all the levels right you have to like match them and they sound like very similar so you guess they are the same it's one a little bit higher one a little bit lower than the other so your goal is to like even them out and it's very tedious i think it takes like an hour um when you're younger it takes a lot longer because you know you're a child um but yeah it's yeah it's it's not it's it's fine um it helps a bit and um so basically, what's really great about my company, uh, which is Cochlear, so there's three of them, that's Cochlear, Advanced Bionics, and Mediel, and that's just in the United States, so I know there's a couple others in different countries, so I'm just going to focus on the United States, because I live in the United States, and um, I was in planning with Cochlear, and I've had them since then, so I'm in my 17th year. Um, this August will be my 18th year, which is kind of crazy, because like, my little internal implant's an adult, and it's just... It's been a journey. Um, so yeah, so I say yeah a lot. Um, anyway, um, so since then I've had uh, one, two, I've had two upgrades so far. So I started off, I don't have this on me and I have no idea where it's at. My dad probably has it, but it's like this box and it was like in my bag. This is the one I was start off with in 2000. And it was called um, the Sprint, I think. And it was like on the back. It was bulky. It took like double A batteries. And so I had to wear like this backpack harness. And uh, during the summer, it wasn't like ideal because I had to wear a t shirt and a harness and then another t shirt. And um, it wasn't the most comfortable thing in the world. I'll tell you that right up front. Um, so I had that and had like a wire that came out through my shirt here. And then they had like a little receiver on my ear with the microphone and the coil, which is, I will show you these parts later on in the video. This is gonna be like really long, so that's why I'm going to um, put little like um, timestamps in the description. So you can't like jump around to different sections once I actually get around to that. Probably not my first uploaded, but like, yeah. Um, so I start off with that and um, it was not very comfortable, like I said. Like, it was okay. Like, I could hear it. It was fine. And then when I was in second grade, so that was like, I don't know, 2007-ish, um, I got a first behind the ear nest of freedom. And I am going to uh, grab that right now, actually, because I actually do have it with me, because right now it's my backup. Um, it's not much of a backup, because you can't get parts for it anymore, but like... I have it, so I'll be right back. Um, oh. Yeah. Hey, I'm back. Um, so, oh my gosh, where's the zipper on us? Okay, so the Freedom was released 2005, and I got it in 2007 or so. And, oh, perfect, it's already assembled. So this is what it looked like. It was, um, yeah. So this is like pretty bulky, it had like this little screen, and this is like my first like behind the ear. So this is my first time I had to wear that backpack, and it was uh, pretty liberating, um, I guess, because like everything was just on my ear, and it was great. Um, I do have like a ton of stories I could share about how I lost this, because I wasn't used to having it. Um, playgrounds, like those metal playgrounds, yeah. He's like to fly off. So I started wearing ear molds for like the rest of like elementary school and then I stopped in like middle school because I didn't really need it anymore. So that was my first one. I'm first like behind the ear and it took, oh, it still got, boom, okay. It still got batteries in the ear, but it took like three of these. Um, yeah, so that's what I had. And then right now I have a Nucleus 5, which came out in 2009. And I got it in 2012. I remember this because this is the year uh, the world was supposed to end and it didn't. You know, yeah. So I'm just gonna like set this behind me so you might see it or not. Um, so the one I have now, it's pretty good. Um, it's got like four different settings. So you got like every day you have noise, you got music and you got focus. And I really love um, focus and the music because the focus, it takes what person in front of you 
and it like amplifies her voice and it lowers the background noise. It's not perfect, but it was way better than the one I had before. I can actually understand people in noisy situations um, a lot better. It wasn't perfect, but it was a lot better, and I really like that. And uh, in terms of music, um, I don't know what it is about the music program. Like every time I'm like playing my music, I just have to put it on the music program. It just it sounds full. It's richer. Um, I can't describe it, but it's amazing. And so I had that. It's the first processor that I had rechargeables. So that one behind me, it had uh, three like disposable batteries. Um, those were kind of annoying to replace, I'm not gonna lie. So what's great about this one, I'll go ahead and take this off. And uh, yes, it comes off. I have stories about that too. Um, so it's brown, cause my hair um, got darker when I, was, I got older. And so it's nice, it's, it's got these two omnidirectional microphones, which is really nice because it kind of gets like all around. Whereas that one, it was only in the back and the front one was like a directional. So these are both omnidirectional, which is really nice. Um, so basically, yeah. And then it has this um, accessory door, which is really nice. I would plug in um, like the school, like FM system. I also plug in my headphone cable and uh, the battery right here. It just twists off. These are rechargeable. Um, I will do a little box in this corner right here of the charging station, like my dry box. So the charging station has got four slots. So I have, I have four rechargeable batteries, but I only have three in there because, um, I keep one rechargeable with me on my, uh, car key chain. I can show that to you in a minute. Um, so... Yeah, so they charge the batteries there, and I put it in a dry box every night, and it takes all the extra moisture out of there, which is pretty important. Um, I've been told that I keep my equipment in pretty good condition, and I guess people don't take care of it sometimes, so there's that. But um, I had this for five years, and it's not giving me... And it's not right in English. Um, it hasn't given me any major issues. Um, processor itself is fine. Um, I had like this weird like hormonal imbalance type of thing I guess when I was like 16 or so because um, like something to do with the skin flap or something like the really strong magnets. I need to get a stronger magnet basically and not just because of the hormones but it's leveled out again and so I need to change that back but I haven't done it yet. Um, so yeah there's that. Um, so that's basically the processor and basically how it works. The sound goes into those microphones I showed you and it goes through this cable into the coil and the coil is held onto the head with a magnet and uh, internal device also has a magnet which means that your boy can't get an MRI unless I have like a procedure to take the magnet out, I believe. Um, the newer ones, you can leave it into a certain Tesla but mine's older so you have to like take it out. So hopefully I don't need an MRI anytime soon. Um, usually CAT scans work just fine. Um, so there's that. And then it goes into the internal device, which is the internal receiver. And it converts into like electrical signal and it goes into the electrodes and the cochlea, which um, in my case, there's 24, like 20,000 ish little hair cells in there. And they do like electrical impulses in which the brain interprets that as sound. Although it's got damage from the meningitis, which has sensor neural hearing loss, and the electrodes got 22 of those. So 22 electrodes replaced those 20,000 little hairs. And that's kind of like mind blowing, cause like, I do really well, but also like, I don't hear the same as other people. Like, yeah, it's really hard to describe. It's a whole nother like video in itself. So I'll just like table that for now. But um, that's basically how it works. So it goes in there and and then my interpreter says sound magic. Um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna um, talk about the future of it real quick. A little pouch thing. And it attaches to my car keys and I just take it around with me. It's have like batteries, like disposable batteries and like disposable battery keys and rechargeable battery keys in there. So that's cool. Um, so in the future, um, I am um, going to get an upgrade sometime in the next year don't know when 
Um, I was actually able to upgrade back in October. Yeah, October. Um, and at the time, they had the Nucleus 6 in the can zone, but they uh, introduced the Nucleus 7 in like July of last year. And the reason why I'm holding out for that is because it's made for iPhone. So I can take my phone, I can listen to music, it will stream it straight to the processor, no wires. Um, I will be uh, right back. I'm gonna show you like what I use, like how I like describe, like why this is so important to me. Okay, so um, right now I use this audio cable and basically this plugs into your um, headphone jack. If your phone still has it, if not, you just plug into the little adapter like I do. And then this other end goes directly into that accessory uh, door right here that I told you about. And it's great. Um, it's very full, very clear. Nobody else hears it. Um, so I love it. But this cable is $150. And I lost quite a few of them. <laughs> and also, they tend to break after the warranty. But I've noticed that this one I bought now, it's a lot stronger, it's more durable. So I'm glad they finally fixed it. So that's great. Uh, the only problem with this is that I'm like listening to music, so I'll plug this in my phone. And um, I'm a little clumsy, so I will just accidentally drop my phone. I'm gonna drop my phone. This cable is pretty short. It attached to my processor. It's also hanging out to my ear like that. So it yanks um, my processor out of my ear. And um, that hurts a lot. Um, yeah, I don't recommend it. So that's why I really like the uh, streaming feature. So I can just play music. It'll stream to my processor and no wires. The only concern is I'm like walking around public and someone's like talking to me. And I don't hear them because I crank my music up all the way. And, which I can get away with because I have nothing to lose. Literally, like all my hearing's gone. So I'll usually have my music up all the way. Because I'm just that person. Yeah. Um, which is nice. Um, so that's what I like about it. I control it with my iPhone, so I can change the program, I can turn the telecoil on, I can turn this accessory on, I can change the mix ratio. So for example, if I have like a teacher or professor has like a microphone, like the mini microphone that comes with it, I can choose to have it 100% microphone, 0% processor, or I can do 50-50 of each. So I can adjust how much from each device I can hear from. So I'm hearing from a processor, I'm hearing from a microphone. Um, which I really like about that. Um, it's got an aqua kit, so I can go swimming in it. Um, this one does have an aqua kit, but it's expensive. But this next one, because it's got the streaming feature, I can skip a couple of the accessories and get the aqua kit. And I can also get the mini microphone, which I'll use, which is really nice. Um, made for iPhone, Bluetooth streaming. And also, like if I get a phone call, I can just pick up my phone. I can't pick up my phone because I'm recording with it, but if I pick up my phone, Hit call. I don't have to bring it up to my ear. I can just like hold it out and I can like talk wirelessly through it, which is really nice. Um, it's, it's like a lot smaller. It's more efficient. You know, all that fun stuff. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, there's no backward compatibility date yet, but Cochlear is really good about backwards compatibility. Um, people for their original 1985 Electro, they can still get the latest technology. So the Nucleus 6, it's basically the same technology as the Nucleus 7, except Nucleus 7 has like the made for iPhone stuff on it and it's smaller. So um, that's great. I just know it will happen eventually. It's just a matter of when. I'm hoping this summer, it could be this fall, it could be next spring. I hope it's by next spring because my processor comes obsolete by then. So it should be by next spring. So, there's that, and that's pretty much about it. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, you're free to leave them below. <laughs> Back up here. Uh, if you have any, uh, oh my goodness, I am a mess. Um, if you have any uh, questions, comments, leave them below. Like, subscribe. Bye. <laughs>